Welcome to podcast number one of chapter nine. Uh, during chapter nine, we're going to learn about how the cell takes the energy from glucose and converts it into ATP. And this is mainly done through a process called cellular respiration. Uh, this uh, process will use the organelle, the mitochondria, to do most of the work. All right, so we're going to be talking about energy a lot. And one of the ways that we measure energy is we use this word called a calorie. A calorie is a unit of measurement that is equal to the amount of energy needed to raise the, the temperature of one gram of water, which is the, the equivalent of a milliliter of water, one degree Celsius. Now, you may not think that's a lot of energy. Is actually a lot. Now, I want you to focus on this small c because it's what you see here in green. This is what is known as a chemistry calorie. The type of calorie that you guys are more familiar with is the big C calorie, which we call a food calorie. A food calorie is actually a kilocalorie. And what a kilocalorie is, remember the prefix kilo means 1,000. This is actually 1,000 of the little c calories. So it's enough energy to bring 1,000 grams of water up one degree. And that would be a liter. So it's enough to bring a liter of water up one degree Celsius. All right. So how much energy is in glucose? Well, one gram of glucose, remember that's the amount of, uh, that's the weight of a paper clip, has the equivalent of 3,811 calories. So one paper clip worth of glucose has enough energy to take 3,811 milliliters of water, bring it up one degree Celsius. So I hope you guys keep that in perspective. All right. Um, how do we release the energy in glucose? Remember, the formula for glucose is C6H12O6. It's done in a three-step process called cellular respiration. The three steps are glycolysis. And let me get ready here to write some more information in here for you guys. Stick with this yellow first, all right? Glycolysis, the word lysis, that means to break. And then glyco basically refers to sugar. So when you're doing glycolysis, you're doing, uh, you're basically, you're breaking sugar in half, all right? And we're going to go over the details on that in the second podcast. And I want you to remember that glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. All right, the next two guys are going to occur in the mitochondria. Now, before we get into going and explaining what the Krebs cycle and the ETC is, I want to draw a picture of a mitochondria. Okay, so you remember back from chapter 7, the mitochondria was often drawn like this. All right, so let's label these two parts. Or actually, there's three parts in here. This is the outer membrane. This part inside is, you guessed it, the inner membrane. And I'm not going to write membrane here because I'm out of room. And then this spot right in here, all this empty space inside the inner membrane, that's the matrix. Okay, and they all have important jobs here. All right, so the Krebs cycle, that's going to occur in the matrix. The electron transport chain, and the electron transport chain actually makes most of the ATP. That occurs right here on the inner membrane. All right, so any questions over that? We're going to go over these details in another podcast. So if you don't totally understand all these right now, that you'll be just fine. This is the overall chemical equation for respiration. Now, before we get down to business on this one, I'm going to write the chemical equation for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, if you can re remember, is six carbon dioxides plus six water molecules. And the presence of light will yield one molecule of glucose and six molecules of oxygen as a waste product. So that's photosynthesis. If you'll look closely, you're going to notice that the reactants, which are these guys on the left of the arrow, the reactants of photosynthesis are the products of cellular respiration. And the products of photosynthesis 
are the reactants of cellular respiration. Right. Now, let's label these again. Uh, let's pick a different color. Let's go with black. Okay, this guy is glucose, if you can't remember. Okay, oxygen, carbon dioxide, and of course water. All right, now, where are all these guys used? Now remember, you got three steps. First step is glycolysis. Second step is the Krebs cycle. The third one is the ETC. All right. Glucose is used during glycolysis. Now, if you say to yourself glycolysis, you'll spell this all the time. Oxygen is used during the ETC. The carbon dioxide is produced during the Krebs cycle. And the water is produced during the electron transport chain. All right, so we have just accounted for every single part of this reaction. Where does it occur? All right, so why do we even go through all this? You get to make 36 ATP per glucose molecule doing cellular respiration. All right? It's extremely important that you get that number down. 36 ATP, 36 ATP, 36 ATP. All right, let's do some labeling down here in our picture. I'm going to make our line a little smaller again. All right, cytoplasm and cytosol are the same thing. So remember, glycolysis occurs in the cytoplasm. The Krebs cycle, remember, that occurs in the matrix. And the matrix is all this stuff right out in here. So all this yellow stuff right here, that's the matrix. The electron transport chain, that's going to occur on the inner membrane. So that's all this line right here. I'm going to draw this blue. This is where the ETC occurs. All right, you see these little bumps right there? And there's another one right in here. It's kind of where the inner membrane is going to fold. This is called a Christie. And what the Christie does is it increases the surface area of the inner membrane. And this will become apparent in the next podcast, podcast number two. All right, this is another thing you guys need to know, so make sure you study this. All right, now what's the difference between aerobic and anaerobic? Well, just like most biology words, the word is telling you what's going on. Oops, let's use yellow. Aerobic kind of sounds like the word air. And if you think about what's the most important thing in the air that we breathe, it would be oxygen. So aerobic means you use oxygen. Now, if you put the an in front of the word, that means no. So anaerobic means no oxygen. You know, does not, does not use oxygen. Okay, now, the Krebs cycle and the ETC are both aerobic. And you'll notice that these both occur in the mitochondria. So everything that occurs in the mitochondria is aerobic. Glycolysis is anaerobic, and that occurs in the cytoplasm. So just think of the cytoplasm, in this case, being an anaerobic environment. That's not necessarily true, but glycolysis is not going to use the oxygen. Right? So if you don't have oxygen, you can still do glycolysis. You cannot do the Krebs cycle or the electron transfer chain unless you have the oxygen. All right, now I already mentioned this a little bit, but remember, how does cellular respiration and photosynthesis compare? They're essentially opposites. And you're going to remember from the previous couple slides ago when I talked about how the products of one were the reactants of the other. Okay, here's photosynthesis. It's occurring inside the chloroplast. And we're going to label, oops, let's pick a different color. We'll label a couple things right here. Okay, remember these stacks of green poker chips? That's the grana, and the grana is the, slight, is the site of the light-dependent reaction. This empty gray space right there, that's the stroma. And the stroma is where the Calvin cycle occurs. Now, the two products of photosynthesis is organic molecules. Remember, that's in the form of glucose 
C6H12O6, and then the waste product, oxygen. These are going to be the reactants for cellular respiration, which is going to occur inside the mitochondria. Okay, now while we're down here at the mitochondria, I'll well label stuff. There's the matrix. Remember, the matrix is where the Krebs occurs. Okay, these folds right here, this would be the Christie, the folds of the inner membrane, and this is where the electron transport chain will occur. The waste products of cellular respiration is carbon dioxide and water, and these are the products for photosynthesis. So these two organelles are constantly cycling back and forth to each other, and this is essential to life. You can't really do one without the other. All right, that will conclude podcast number one from chapter nine.